Alrighty. It's a nice Saturday morning. So I decided I'm gonna record another video. Uh, I am once again experimenting with microphones, cameras. I'm recording it on two different cell phones. I don't know which one I'm gonna use. Uh, this time I'm not gonna talk so much about scopes as about mounts and covers or just one real company that makes mounts and covers and stuff called the odd mount. I mentioned odd mount spelled A-A-D-M-O-U-N-T a fair bit because these are the mounts I use a lot. And this time around, um, I figured I should go into a little more detail, especially since they also make absolutely excellent uh, scope caps that uh, you know, I keep mentioning, but I see some questions about them, so I figured I should do I should do a video. Anyhow, so this is my favorite precision scope so far, a Tangent Theta TT315M at 30mm, 3x15x50, front focal plane design that is just excellent, and I outfitted it into a whole odd mount paraphernalia of all sorts. Uh, just to show you, I've um, I've seen I, I've used odd mount scope caps a fair bit before for the first gen, and since then they've totally redesigned them. And uh, aside from scope caps, they also make these cattails, and they also make uh, rings for parallax grippers, but only for SWFA scopes, I think. At least this one doesn't have. It. So what this has from odd mount is the mount, the cattail, the uh, eyepiece cover and the objective cover. Actually, it has two objective covers. This one has an integrated kill flash, and there is another objective cover like this, and I'm gonna swap this out on video, that does not have a kill flash. The engine data by itself comes with a tenebrae kill flash and uh, a cap, which are quite nice by themselves, I think. Uh, I do think odd mount caps are better. They're much, much sturdier. They are, I believe, virtually impossible to break. The first gen I couldn't break. They tell me the second gen is even tougher. So, no, we'll see. And uh, the way they are attached, the first gen was just kind of a very tight fit slip on. The material they use, it's sort of a plastic composite material that's exceedingly tough. These things are almost impossible to break. I mean, I gave it to my kids for half hour. They couldn't break it. That's, that's saying something. Uh, but anyhow, so the second gen uh, uh, caps have these little tightening collars, if you wish. There is a, um, in the 332nd hex range, it comes uh, with a cap uh, to remove. So to open the cap, there are a couple of tabs here, just push the bottom of it. If you can see here, they do not extend beyond the bottom of the scope. So in terms of how low the mounting is, you only need to worry about the thickness, and it looks like to be about two and a half, three millimeters. So about a tenth of an inch or so uh, thickness. But anyhow, so to remove it from the scope, you basically loosen this little screw, and it doesn't have to be tightened very much, and slip it off, and that's it. To give you an idea, so this one has an integrated kill flash into the cap, which is kind of nice. On the tangentator, the cap and the kill flash are two different things, you know, the cap is removable. Uh, the, if you look at it, I don't know how well you can see, I'll show you side by side. This is tangentator kill flash uh, from a company called Tenebrae, which is a sister company, and this is the odd mount uh, kill flash, okay? You see that the cells are much larger than this, so it, uh, the image is a little bit less dim with this side style of kill flash than with this. How effective it is as a kill flash is hard for me to say. From it's a little bit longer also, so from what I've seen, it's just as effective. And this whole this is all basically one piece. It's one uh, material. This whole honeycomb and everything the same plastic material. The tangentator kill flash is uh, uh, machine aluminum. So, but you know, it's it's very very well made. But the odd mount is uh, something else. Here's the objective cap without the kill flash material. And all you need to do to put it on is basically, you know, make sure the screw is a little bit loose, slide it on, and tighten it a little bit. It comes with instructions how you make it tight, and you make it just a little more tight. Don't over tighten it. I honestly, I looked at it and I sort of disregarded it because it sort of makes sense to not freaking over tighten a plastic piece, but then again, I don't know, it's not. It does, it, this is not going to break anytime soon, 
Uh, on the other side, there is an integrated little nut there that does not fall out. That's where the screw goes. To open it up, you basically just do this and a spring loaded and they kind of spring. I might put something soft here to cut down on the twang sound. There is a spring. All good. On the eyepiece, to open it, you basically push on this tab. So there's a lever and it opens. Okay. The cap tail has the same screw. It's also a 337 L wrench. It goes in there. I'm not going to remove it now. It's fitted to the uh, uh, each one is individually designed for every magnification ring. There's some knurling there so that matches it, so it cannot slip, no matter how much you try. Okay. So there you go. So that's the eyepiece cap, objective cap, and the objective cap with an... This thing's just tight. Yeah. There's a very slight amount of flex in it, but not much. Anyhow, an objective cap uh, with a honeycomb style uh, kill flash. I don't know which I'm gonna use on a more permanent basis. I don't know. I'll probably put the kill flash on, I kinda like it. The funny story with the stage and theta scope for one of the tests I was doing where I was using it as a part of the comparison, I put on the kill flash and forgot about it, right? And I did the whole test of comparing it to some other products with a kill flash on. And, then, and I finally noticed that I was doing low light because the image fidelity was still on par with anything else out there or a little over touch better. But the image looked a little darker. That's what I went and said, no, wait a second. Oh, I'm cutting off 20% you know, of the light. That's still good. That's how good these things are. Now onto the mount. I've talked about the mount before. Uh, one of the interesting things that uh, guys at Odd Mount do with the mounts is that this actual aluminum mount is a 35 millimeter and there are um, composite plastic of some sort inserts from the same material that the caps and the cap tail are made out of that reduce the diameter and uh, provide some inclination if I am uh, so inclined. Okay, The mount by itself is 20 MOA so these are I think just straight inserts that maintain this 20 MOA uh, incline. I like the inserts partly because they don't scratch the scope too, partly because the way this material is, it, I don't think you'll see it very well in video, it's slightly rough and it's not, it's not slippery at all, it provides a lot of friction and I've used these inserts for a lot of different things and uh, they, they work really well. Also, if you decide to use it with different scope, you don't necessarily need a different mount, you just need a different insert. They, for the 35 millimeter mount, they have inserts to 34 millimeters. In this case, the inserts would take you down to 30 millimeter. The mount itself is very slightly larger than a 30 millimeter, native 30 millimeter mount would be, but it's not so large. I mean, this is a fairly trim scope and uh, maybe it adds a third of an ounce of weight or something, I don't know. Um, the, they were a little bit worried when I talked to them that this would obstruct the use of the parallax, but you know, I don't think it gets in the way at all. So that's pretty good. Overall, I'm really happy with these. The mount uses T25 uh, screws for both ring caps and for gripping the rail. Um, they, when they send you the mount, it comes with the L wrench and with a little piece. And, uh, and that's more or less all there is to it, I think. Oh, um, there is an integrated bubble level in the base here, and the bubble level is uh, sort of a some sort of a tritium something glow in the dark sort of thing, which I like. It's pretty it's pretty easy to see. This is the latest on the Gen three mount they've got. The, so Gen one didn't have the bubble level. Gen two added the bubble level. Uh, I think I was probably partially at my suggestion. We talked about it. In Gen three, they added this uh, luminous. Uh, bubble level. Okay. Let's see what else. I think that's largely it for recoil control. There are three recoil lugs, so depending on what rail you have, you may be engaging all three or just one. Any one is enough. Um, the amount of torque this clamps on the rail is remarkable. I think I've mentioned it. I once had one of the scopes in an odd mount where I forgot to tighten. There are four screws here. I forgot to tighten three out of four. Basically, what I do. When I try to figure out where the uh, scope is supposed to sit in the rail, 
I basically flop it on, tighten, tighten one of the screws and look at it, right? And then what I was doing, I was uh, setting it up for the rifle, I tightened one screw and I forgot about the other three. And even the 358 Lapua recoil did not budge this thing. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with this mount. Now to be clear, all right, I'll put this down. I'm sure you're getting busy for me twirling it in my, in my hands. There are a lot of good mounts out there, right? Um, I've used a lot of them. And most of them are quite good. I don't think you'll find, uh, I mean, there are some really crappy mounts out there, but most are good. Guys that makes good ones, Steinoff has a new one that seems quite good. Night Force mounts are very good. Uh, with uh, American Defense Manufacturing, I don't like the vertical mount split rings too much, but uh, they work and I've uh, used a lot of them. Uh, Bobro makes really nice, quick detachable mounts. Uh, not too big on LaRue, a good mounts, but. Um, they're vertically split and they lever the way they do the levers, I think it shows up the rails a little bit. Um, I've used a lot of them. Many of them work. Some are, there are a couple that are crappy. Most of them work all right. And in this price range, this is, you know, probably $250, $300 mount. In this price range, almost everything is quite good. Is odd mount better? I wouldn't be able to tell you, right? I like the way it's designed. The guy who designed them is a really good mechanical engineer. Uh, you know, I've talked to him a fair bit. He knows what he's doing, but he's not only a mechanical engineer in this business. Right? What I like about them is that I have a lot of mileage with them, and I really like the whole business with composite plastic inserts. Really grip the scope well, don't slip, and if for whatever reason my rifle has some sort of a really screwy rail angles, and remember I shoot a lot of old guns that have been butchered, sometimes by me, sometimes by somebody else. So I don't always get all the rails aligned properly. The inserts allow me to dial it in if necessary. Or if I simply want to maximize how much internal elevation I have available, I can use the inserts. I don't have to buy a new mount for everything, and I, I kind of like that. But aside from that, I've just used a bunch of these, and I haven't had a single marginally noteworthy issue uh, with any of these, right? So, I, I like them, I like them quite a bit, uh, but this is the first time I'm seeing the Gen 2 uh, scope caps and a, and a cat tail, and uh, I like what I see. Everything is nice and smooth, nothing is gonna snag. Everything is either deformed or made like this, there are no sharp edges anywhere. Um, it's good design, I like it. I'm gonna beat it up a little more, see if I can break it, maybe have my kids give it another shot, and. Uh, We'll go from there. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time.